Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. The last time I did a review on Power Queen was with this 50 amp hour 12 volt battery. And I have to say it still works flawlessly. But now I have another one. I believe it's a 100 amp variety and so let's go ahead and open it up and see what we have. All right, when you open it up, you can expect a uh, pamphlet with a user's manual and uh, some quick start guides. So we'll be opening that in just a second. You will get your top styrofoam with the post bolts here sign. And it gives you, it looks like uh, two M8 post bolts and a couple of post bolt covers. All right, and then here is the battery. Now, if you're looking at the comparisons between the 50 amp hour and the 100 amp hour variations, this one is, you know, at least last year's model, if not two years ago. Um, you know, it's just a battery. It only has 50 amp hours and that's all you're getting, capacity. With this one, you get low temperature charging protection and you get Bluetooth. So they've packed a lot more into this, uh, into this newer 100 amp hour battery than they did, you know, even last year. Okay, looking at the front of this battery, again, it does say that's 12.8 volt, 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Um, it does have the website right here, ipowerqueen.com. It does show that it is Bluetooth 5.0, which I believe is pretty close to the newest uh, version of Bluetooth. And it also says low temp, which I am guessing is low temperature charging protection. Uh, the sides and the back, let's see, the back, it does have the do not do things like open it, puncture it, heat the battery up too fast, uh, or touch the exposed electrolyte or powder inside the battery if the case is damaged. Uh, and then again, it does have some other uh, information on the back. On the top, even more information, which it has the nominal voltage of 12.8 volts. It has the rated capacity at 100 amp hours. The rated energy is 1,280 watt hours. You get that by multiplying the voltage by the amperage. Uh, the charging voltage is 14.4, give or take 0.2 volts. And then the maximum continuous charge and discharge current is 100 amps. And that is typical for a 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. Maximum continuous output power is 1,280 watts. So we'll be testing this to see what happens when we go over. Also, it does say that uh, you can download it from the Apple Store and the Google Play Store. And it has, the again, the website and a service at ipowerqueen.com if you need to email them about some sort of technical service for the battery. All right, the dimensions of this battery in inches, we're looking at uh, exactly 10 inches uh, long. We're looking at eight and three quarter inches in height and the depth is a little tiny bit over six and a half inches and it weighs 21.5 pounds. And this battery is also being labeled as a group 24. What that means is that it is a different form factor than a group 31 battery. As you can tell, the group 24 is a lot shorter when it comes to the length of the battery. Like I said before, this battery is 10 inches long and a group 31 battery is uh, 12 and three quarter inches long. But the height and the depth of both these batteries are the same. Okay, the first thing that you should do with your battery when you first receive it is check the voltage to make sure that it is working properly right out of the box. It should be between 13.1 and 13.2. That's like optimal. If it's like 13.3 or 13, that'll still be fine. But 13.1 to 13.2 is kind of what you want. Okay, and our voltage is... Oh, uh, it is 3.22 volts. So uh, this battery is not what it should be. Uh, so what we're going to do... When it's 3.2 volts, that might mean that it's actually asleep. Like the BMS has shut off due to protect the cells. So we're going to try to uh, uh, wake it up with a, a 12, another 12 volt source to see if it will actually put something into the battery. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our, uh, we're going to put our post bolts on. 
and then I'm going to use my my bench top charger to push like 14 volts into it and see if that makes a difference. Okay, so let's go ahead and connect this negative to negative, positive to positive. <clears throat> let's get you in a little bit closer here. And I have my bench top charger right here, so let's go ahead and turn it on. It should be set at 14 volts already. All right. And it did wake it up. It's now putting 14.1 volts in there. It's giving it 93 watts of charge. So let's turn this off. And now let's check the voltage. And our voltage is 13.19, which is exactly where it should be. Now, okay, I'm not gonna lie to you, that is alarming. When you get a battery and, it, and the BMS is asleep, the BMS should only go to sleep as if it got too hot, too cold, or if it had an over amperage or over voltage event. The BMS would shut off in order to, to protect the cells. So, I mean, in a sense, it's kind of like, oh good, the BMS did its job, but why did it do its job? So if you ever do get a battery that is like that, uh, you do need to try to wake it up with another 12 volt source. I mean, another 12 volt battery, like the one in your car, uh, that would work just fine. Just touch them for about a second. But now it is very necessary to do a capacity test to make sure that there is nothing wrong with one of, one of the cells inside. Uh, you know, that it, there, there could be any number of things that's wrong. So we're going to go on the, on the edge of uh, there, there could be something wrong with this battery, but we're going to do all of our testing and uh, we'll just pay special detail to make sure that it doesn't shut off when it's not supposed to. If it doesn't, then it was probably just an anomaly and your battery will be fine. So I'm going to go ahead and charge this battery up to 100%, which it says is between 14.2 and 14.6 volts. And then I'm going to do a discharge test of about a 0.12C test. So it takes about eight hours, but it will give us a very good uh, rating of the capacity of this battery. So as soon as I get done with all that, I'll let you know the results. All right, while the Power Queen battery is charging up, let's go ahead and look at the uh, packet that we got. All right, and the first thing is the product manual. The product manual is nice because it tells you everything about the battery. It tells you how to wire it in either parallel or series. It tells you how to estimate the battery capacity using voltage, which is uh, not the most accurate, but it can be done. It also tells what you should do if the battery stops working. So we could have used this right off the bat when we found out that our battery is only at three volts when we first tested it out of the box. Uh, it would have said to put it, in a, put it on a charger that would give it a 12 volt jump source and, uh, and then go from there. Uh, user's manual is always nice if you wanna know anything about the battery that you're purchasing. Uh, it also comes with some stickers, so if you want to flaunt that you have a Power Queen, you can put some stickers on some places. And then it also comes with a quick start guide. And this guide just kind of tells you uh, things you should do before, uh, the operating precautions, uh, the connecting precautions, and the do's and don'ts of this battery. When I get back, I'll tell you the capacity of this battery, and we will do some high amperage testing to make sure that the battery is safe. All right, well, we uh, got done with our capacity test. The test took about eight and a half hours and our capacity is 102.97 amp hours. So just a little shy of 103. That equates to 1244.6 watt hours. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and set it up over here with a 5,000 watt inverter and we're gonna do some high amperage testing to make sure that it's safe. All right, well, I got my high amperage rig all set up right here. And what I have is the, uh, the Power Queen battery right here, which can do a continuous discharge of 100 amps. So that's what we're gonna be doing. I also have my clamp meter right here. So we're gonna be able to monitor the amperage that's coming out of the battery, along with the voltage of the battery right there. It's going into my 5,000 watt 12 volt inverter, which will be powering a 500 watt heater. 
um, a induction cooktop, the new wave, and then also a small 200 watt heater right here. And I will have a timer set and I'm just gonna run this test. I'm gonna try to do it for about 100 amps for about five minutes. So let's go ahead and turn on the new wave first. We're gonna set it to 600 watts. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and do a medium setting and we will start. And we will turn on this 500 watt heater as well. Let's see what that gives us. All right, our amperage is gone over 100. It should really be stabilized at right around 100 to maybe 103. Uh, you can see that our voltage is already dropped down to 12.88, which is very standard for this type of battery. And let's go ahead and start our timer. I'm gonna go ahead and let this run for five minutes and then we will check to make sure everything's okay. After that, we were gonna go ahead and probably just boost it up to see if the battery shuts off because of an over amperage event. Okay, well, it's been actually six minutes now, and so let's go ahead and check out the thermal camera to see if there's any hot spots in the battery. And you can see that this battery is performing very well. Um, the hottest spot that I can see is pretty much this top part right here. And I mean, we're talking 70 degrees. Uh, see around the side of the battery, there's a small hot spot right here, which is no big deal because it's, it's only 70 degrees, 77. Uh, looks like there's a little bit of, on the bottom here, but again, the range is well within what this battery can handle. Comparing it to the heater and our induction cooktop which are nice and toasty so we're going to go ahead and jack this up a little bit we're going to try to do like maybe 150 170 amps and we'll see if this battery shuts off so let's go and do that now first thing i'll do is i'll turn up I'll i'm going to turn on this heater right here and we'll crank up the amperage amperage is now 112 113 115 117 120 125 all right, it's 130 amps now and it still hasn't shut off. And let's go ahead and crank this up to the 900 watts. Get a closer look here. Amperage is Good, good, good. Amperage was at around 140 and the battery shut down the whole process. So bravo, Power Queen. That is exactly what it should do. When it goes over amperage, it should shut off. And after about 30 seconds, the battery did click back on. That is exactly the way it should work. That means that this battery is pretty safe to use when it comes to any kind of application you're gonna throw at it. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect all this stuff and I'm gonna go ahead and throw it in my deep freezer, leave it in there for about 24 hours and then we'll try to charge it to see if the uh, low temperature charging protection actually works. But before we do all that, let's go ahead and check out the app to see what it has to offer. All right, everyone, uh, now we're gonna check out the app that's associated with this Group 24 Bluetooth capable uh, Power Queen battery. So when you first download the app, this is the screen that you're gonna get when you open it up. Let's go ahead and look at it. Okay, so it shows uh, manage your devices effortless, effort, effortlessly anytime, anywhere. So we're gonna go ahead next and connect easily by scanning QR code, which I'm guessing is the QR code right on top of the battery. So we'll hit next. Connect easily by searching. Nearly Nearby devices, only one tap to connect. And monitor your devices in real time. So let's start now. Okay, and now we're in the login screen. So I have not registered yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit register now. I will fill in the information and I'll get right back to you. All right, and as soon as you log in, it says hello and then your email address or whatever. And it says no devices added, so add device. We'll click that and we're gonna go ahead and do a scan QR code. And while using the app, I will allow it to use my camera. 
There we go. And I'm going to scan the QR code. It says Bluetooth connected. Uh, I'll go ahead and click on check details. And right there, it tells me information about this battery. Uh, you can see on the left-hand side that it says the state of charge is 85%. Uh, it says standby at the top. The temperature is 62.6 .6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is probably correct because it's a basement. It's pretty cold down here. Uh, it shows the voltage as 13.4, and the power and the current are both zero because the battery is doing nothing. Let's go ahead and put a charger on it and see how quickly it connects to the app. All right, putting a charger on. And you can see right away, uh, yeah, powering at 98, 95, 98 watts. Yeah, you can see right away that it shows the power, it shows the current going in, also shows the voltage. At the top, it does show charging and how long it will take until it's fully charged, which is pretty nice. Um, at the bottom here, I'm going to click on cells. And it says battery is optimal working condition, BMS, your BMS is running smoothly. Balance, and it says all cells are well balanced. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Uh, down here at the very bottom, I'm going to click on the bottom button. Troubleshooting, it just gives me tips. And then, um, let me back to my devices. And there on the right hand side at the bottom, there is a power button. And I can, I can turn off the battery remotely from here, which is pretty nice. It's a good app to have if you just want a quick glance of what your state of charge is or how long it's going to be charging or discharging at that point. Um, but if you're looking into trying to find out what like the, the, the individual cell voltages are or what your individual uh, uh, temperature controls are uh, on the, in the battery, I don't believe you're going to find that here. Okay. Just pulled this guy right out of the freezer. We're going to go and hook it up right now to see if it'll charge. I got my uh, Litheim charger right here. It's a lithium iron phosphate only charger. And right now you can see the light is blinking green, which means it's on standby. Uh, if it's a solid green, it means it's fully charged. If it is a solid red, it is uh, charging. And if it is flashing red, that means that it is, uh, there's a fault. Uh, what it should do is it should go into uh, a solid red to show that it's charging for just a few seconds. And then it will switch over to a solid green showing that it's fully charged uh, because the BMS has shut off. So let's go ahead and try to charge it. There we go, it's trying to charge. Perfect, and it's shut off. That means that the BMS has shut off because it is so cold. That is exactly the way it should be. All right, well that's it for the Power Queen 12 volt 100 amp hour lithium iron phosphate battery. That includes a Bluetooth and low temp charging protection. Um, this battery does claim that it does 100 amp hours, which it did, I think, 102, almost 103 amp hours. Um, when I first got it, it was, the BMS was shut off, but after all my testing, there are no issues with this battery whatsoever. It does everything that you expect it to. It passed all the tests that I wanted it to. That includes the high amperage test and the low temperature charging test. This is definitely one to look at if you're into getting a lithium iron phosphate battery. So if you have any questions about this lithium iron phosphate battery from Power Queen, please leave them in the comments. I'll have a link to this in my description in case you want to look further into it. Thank you so much for watching this video and have a great day. Bye-bye.